Welcome to the Boss Up Talk Podcast. This podcast spotlights unapologetic creatives, entrepreneurs, and black women founders who have taken the leap of faith. Boss Up Talk is here to help you find your creative gift, develop it, and build a sustainable lifestyle from it. In each episode, we'll discuss the mindset, habits, routines, branding tricks, marketing tips, business strategies, systems, and processes that help you make money doing what you love. Let's boss up. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's Boss Up Talk. And today we are joining Sammy, um, a photographer based in Nashville, and we'll be discussing how to start your business as a photographer. We'll be discussing some tips and tricks um, and just talk about her journey. So welcome, Sammy. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. All right, Sam. So tell us a little bit more about you. I know that you're based in Nashville, but tell the people more about you. So I am from Greenbrier. I don't know if you guys know where that is. It's about 30 minutes north of here. So I grew up basically around Nashville. Um, I started out um, doing journalism with my career. That was what I went to school for. That was what I thought I really wanted to do. Um, and then I actually worked in news and realized it was a freaking mess. And um, it's one of those careers where you're just like working all the time and you have nothing to show for it. And it's politically frustrating and it's just like a very high stress level job. And so I was taking pictures like I mean, I, even back to high school, I was always taking pictures like of my friends and Halloween and just everything I get my hands on. But I wasn't really doing it in, as like an art form by any means. But once I was in college, um, I was the photography editor for MTSU sidelines, went to MTSU, just right down the road, um, majored in journalism. And anyway, and so I, I started taking pictures when I was in college that were like more around fashion and more around like fun things that I loved. So once I graduated, I spent a year working in journalism and I was still doing like those fun fashion shoots just with like friends, like just playing dress up, to be honest. Um, and yeah, I got sick of news and I was like, I think I could actually do this for my career. And I had no idea how I was going to do it. I quit my job at the newspaper. I had like a hundred dollars in the bank, maybe like maybe. Um, and I just, yeah. And that was five years ago. And I was like, I'm not looking back. This is definitely what I'm doing. Um, so yeah. So now um, five years later, I'm a full-time photographer. I also do some graphic design. I do editing. I, I do creative direction. Um, I still do those fun shoots with my friends and stuff like with, you know, collabs and creative, but um, yeah, I've gotten to work with a lot of really cool clients so far and yeah, I do, I do photography. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so, oh, let me make sure. Okay. Um, so one of the things that you mentioned was um, you thought that you could make this like a full-time thing. And I know when, so we met, I guess, five years ago. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> wait let me unmute you because um, sorry yeah I did I forgot about the mute thing but yeah it, it must have been five years ago that was right when I started I remember yeah so I was just gonna say um I remember us having a discussion about you quitting your job and doing this full time and I was like oh my gosh that's so exciting I'm so, I was asking you a ton of questions so now that you're five years in, tell me a little bit more about how that journey has been for you. Um, so the first like two or three years of freelancing was really, really, really hard. Um, I also like was not in the right mindset. And I think like if I could go back and tell my younger self anything, it would be to just go ahead and get in the mindset of positivity and of like not accepting anything other than like what brings you the most peace. Um, the first couple of years I was working all the time. I was like, you know, hoeing myself out to clients and, you know, trying to get gigs left and right. And I felt like I was hustling, you know, kind of like I was in journalism, hustling all the time and working all the time. And it's like, this is what we're taught to do. This is how it's supposed to be, right? Like, why is this not working? Um, so about two years ago, year and a half, two years ago, I, 
just kind of was at a point where I was like, okay, I'm not making any money. I still have nothing to show for it. Like I don't have, I didn't even have a car. Like I was like buying groceries with just like change. And so I was like, okay, so this is something in my mindset. Like, and this girl um, kind of just like fell into my path and she was doing a life coach session. And she said, Oh, Hey, why don't we do like a trade? Like you can do some photos for me and you can take my, you know, my life coach session. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like life coaching, like whatever. But, um, I took it and it was honestly like so life changing. It was a money mindset mastery course with my friend, Brooke Kalen. Um, I think she's just on Instagram, Brooke underscore Kalen, if you want to find her, but her like money mindset mastery course completely reset the way that I view money. Like I, I don't know about everybody else that's watching, but I was kind of raised in a, like a lack mentality household. Like my parents didn't really have a lot of money and it was always like money was tight. Like we, Oh, we can afford that. So that mindset was like ingrained in me. And I had to do like a lot of, I mean, I'm still digging, but a lot of like emotional and spiritual digging that up and being like, actually, that's not the truth. That's just what my parents taught me. And so um, with the course that I took, it was super spiritual. Like she had us meditating every day, which these are practices that I still carry now, but meditating every day, writing affirmations. And like one of the things that she taught me that has stuck with me is to like eliminate any negative um, talk that comes out of your mouth. So if you say like, oh, I'm broke or I can't afford that, like you just shift it into I'm going to get that another day. So that way it's like you can still acknowledge that. Yes, like maybe you don't have it right now, but you're going to do it another day. So it just like reprograms your whole brain like towards positivity. And so just like catching those negative thoughts. Um, so yeah, so I took that class and then I started implementing these techniques and like all this stuff just started happening. Like I had randomly applied to go to this thing at NASA, which I was like, there's no way I'll get in and somehow got in got to go and shoot it. And it wasn't paid, but still it was like freaking NASA. Wait, Sam, 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 let's talk, oh, yeah. about, let's talk about the the NASA thing, because I remember seeing it. I remember seeing you post and I was like, what in the hell is going on? I was so excited. So I, you said it was unpaid. Nobody cares about that. But tell us a little bit more about your experience with NASA and how was that? Yeah, um, that was really, really cool. So they have a NASA social program and it's like if you're a person on social media, you can apply for it. I got there and there were people from all different walks of life, like grandmas who were teachers to like young people with thousands and thousands of followers to like people, you know, normal people, all these types of people. It's like if you have social media, they want you to come and share it with your network. But basically you go and you're like doing live coverage of a rocket launch and they take you around and show you all this cool stuff. You get tickets to the museum. You get to talk to like astronauts and scientists. And um, it was crazy. It was surreal. But it was also like it was in June of last year. So it was in it's in Titusville, Florida. Um, and it's sweltering hot. So we're walking around and they're also like, oh, you have to wear long sleeves and long pants for like safety hazard. So we're walking around just like sweating our butts off. Tr like trying to take it in. And I had worked a gig a couple of days, before, like the day before. So my mom and I drove down there. We have friends in Tampa. So we went there after, but um, we drove down there right as I had finished shooting a wedding all day. So I was done with the wedding at like 10, 11 PM. And then we immediately drove to Florida. And by the time we got there, I had like 30 minutes to spare before we had to check in. So I was like exhausted and, and tired and all this stuff. So it was really surreal. So I'm glad I had my camera with me because it was, it was crazy. It was really, really cool to be to be a part of that. And it was for me, it was the first thing like in my like spiritual journey as a creative that was like, oh, I think there's something to this like law of attraction, like manifesting thing. So it was like it was pretty pivotal, P pivotal. Sorry, it was really cool. No, that's so great, um, especially with. Um well, I, I had no idea that a program like that existed. So even seeing that was inspirational for me because I'm like, oh, my gosh, as a creative, those are opportunities that we um, only dream about. But the other thing that you just mentioned was um, the law of attraction and you mentioned manifestation. So I know we said we were going to talk a little bit about that um, as part of your journey, but go ahead and share any insight that you would like to about those two things. 
Yeah, so um, NASA happened, then all, you know, all these other gigs started coming in and they weren't necessarily gigs that are like my dream gigs, but they were paying gigs. So the money just started like coming more easily once I started shifting my mindset more in the direction of a wealth mindset, a, um, and not necessarily wealth as far as having like a million dollars in the bank, but just like the wealth around you, like even the sun shining could be considered like abundance if you look at it that way. And so it just, it's all in like reprogramming. So I suggest getting like a notebook and starting writing out like affirmations daily, do like 10 minute meditations. There's tons on YouTube, just like find the one that works for you. Um, but yeah, so then uh, this year, COVID happened, obviously. So everything kind of got like derailed for a second. And I started finding myself more easily slipping back into that lack mindset. And um, so I was like, well, that's not that can't, that can't be <laughs> because I'm not that, you know, there's no going back. So it's funny how people just kind of like magically end up coming into your life. But um, this girl, um, her Instagram is Honey Sola and she runs this program called the Feminine Frequency. And it was another like lifestyle course. But I'd had like I liked Brooks that I'd taken so much that I was like, I actually really like what this girl is saying about like being in your feminine energy. And I think I'd heard her podcast first, maybe something like that. And so I, um, I found another course. It was the feminine frequency course that I took from her. And it's all about like being in your feminine flow and like masculine energy versus feminine energy. And so what she started talking about is saying that like society kind of has women brainwashed to think that we have to like do the work of a man, like that we have to hustle all the time and we have to like, you know, go, 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 go. But like when I was practicing that thinking I was doing the right thing. I, I had already seen like I really didn't have much else to show for it. And I was like tired and miserable all the time. And so what she explains is that like feminine energy, if you think of it, like not in the terms of like male and female, but like masculine energy, feminine energy, feminine energy is all about like receiving. So if you think of like planet Earth, like mother nature is female. And what does she do? She just is. She just like receives the rays from the sun and like floats in space. And so she essentially like kind of teaches you to be more like that and to be more like water in this like really spiritual kind of way. And so I guess it was like March that I started that course. And then I've this has been my best year that I have ever had. Once I started tapping into that that feminine flow of just like allowing things to be allowing things to come to you and just like kind of submitting your desires or the things you want to quote manifest because manifesting in itself, like it starts with the word man. It's a masculine thing. It means to like to do, to create, to like make something happen. So she says, you know, to use your masculine energy only to do the things that bring you joy and to only do only use it to do the things that like make you feel good in your body. Um, I don't remember where else I was going to go with that, but. <laughs> no, it's, so the whole masculine and feminine energy, that's something that I just started learning about last year. So I'm not as, uh, I didn't take a course about it, but I do understand some of the things you're saying as far as manifestation and uh, the act of the hustle, um, which is interesting because I've been thinking about the last five years for me, um, and I had a full-time job and I was still doing this creative thing. It was so much of a hustle. And this year, although COVID has happened, I have, like you said, been focusing my energy on things that make me happy, things that I'm actually really passionate about. And I can work on it all day without feeling tired or, you know, sad. Um, and, and opportunities have literally just been falling into my lap. But it's, it's, it's literally the law of attraction in the sense of what you said as far as feminine energy, um, just being be <laughs> just me. So I definitely understand that. Um, now let's get into, um, let's get back to your journey as far as um, some of the things that you wish you would have learned or known um, when you first started out as a photographer, especially when it comes to business, because um, I recently read a quote um, for, um, it was a photographer, but he was saying that, um, it's 80%, no, it's 20% photography skills and 80% business. So, and I, I actually, I don't know if that percentage is right, but as a creative, um, I do know that a lot of times the peers or the people that I've met, 
they have a they have some issues with the business aspect of being a creative. Um, and it, it came a lot easier for me because I have a business degree. And you went to MTSU, so you do have um, some insight on you know business from that perspective. So what 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 tips do you have, or you know what would you what do you wish you would have known back then? I think when I first started, I was mixing business and friendships like way too much. Um, I definitely like would just pass out free stuff to my friends like it was candy. And I still do that. Like I still love to collab, but I was definitely, um, I don't know, kind of like enamored with the friends that I had at the time and like thought that what they thought of my work was more important than like what I felt about my own work. And so I just kind of let that like take over and I really lost sight of like, you're a freelancer running a business. Like it's not all play and it is play. Like it is fun, you know, even when you're working with a client, but um, yeah, so I would, I would probably go back and like, just, you know, weed out your garden of toxic people like if there are is a friend in your life or somebody in your life that is just like such a negative Nancy and like, I don't know, makes you feel insecure or makes you feel self-conscious or lies to you, like just cut them out. And it's like when I when I finally did that, I was like probably two and a half, three years into my like freelancing journey that I was like, all right, I'm 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 done with like these people that are like sucking my soul, um, my business. I, I mean, I mean it just felt like a weight dropped. And when that happens, you just naturally like energetically open up more space for new clients to come in. In a way I thought like, Oh, did I lose like my muses somehow? Like, am I ever going to create as well? But the stuff that I make now is like way better than it was a couple of years ago. So yeah, first thing is like, just keep personal and business. I would say separate as a creative that can be really hard to do because we're inspired by, you know, by complicated people (laughs) most of the time. Um, Yeah. uh, As far as business tips go, like I was always really like bad at math and had an aversion to any kind of like business classes or anything like that. So when I quit my job, I just was like, okay, I'm, I'm free falling into this. Like I had zero business plan. I didn't even think about it. I was like, I'm just going to do this. My parents were like, you're fucking nuts. Like, what are you doing? But I just knew that that was what I wanted to do. And I haven't really like, told the universe that I want anything else. Like it's just the, the path was always like so clear. There's no other, there's no other option. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm the best person to give like business strategies. I mean, before I started doing the manifesting stuff, like my strategy was to like scour Craigslist and Facebook for gigs until I found something. And I, I wouldn't, I've never been good at like being a salesperson. I've never been good at like harassing people to buy my product. So I would just post, I mean, now a days I just post my work and people come um, so that's, that's my business strategy. It's probably not, you know, I'm not going to be a Jeff Bezos with it, but. <laughs> uh, no, I think, um, well, there are a few things. So one, you just said like the sales thing. I'm I'm not good at that either. I am not good at being a salesy person, but I find that, like you said, when you post your work and when you're passionate about what it is that you do and you believe in what it is that you do, your clients will come, customers come, um, people who want to collab, better, bigger opportunities, all of that stuff kind of comes naturally. Um, but as far as business tips, so one of the things that you mentioned was not having a business plan. And although that, although you, you said that you didn't have that, um, that is something that we can discuss because a lot of you know, creatives don't have a business, but like they really don't. Now, luckily for me, I was a business, I I have a degree in accounting. So it was, it was like a, they ingrained those types of things for me. But to be honest with you, and I'm talking to everybody out there, um, those having a business plan and having all of these things written down on what, that is not going to be the thing that is going to help you be a successful creative as a business owner. It's not. Um, But strategy is, or at least knowing, um, like one of the things you mentioned, uh, separating business from personal things, making sure that you are um, removing the negative energy, the negative friends, the negative clients out of your space. Um, And then the other thing that you mentioned 
was um dang what was it hmm i forgot what it was but it was like a good point oh my gosh um hopefully it'll come back to me but um as far as business tips the other thing i wanted to ask you or not necessarily business tips but more so um just what do you wish you would have known then so you mentioned let's just go over those again just to make sure that um the point is made um yeah cut out all negative people cut out all negative thinking within yourself like i think cutting out negative thinking like within myself would be the main thing i would go back and tell myself is like nobody else's opinion of your art matters nobody else's like thoughts on how you run your business matters like what matters is what feels good to you and man i used to be such an overthinker about everything and i would like overthink you know the boys i was dating and it would distract me from my work and i would overthink my work and i wouldn't make any money and so you know just get out of your mind and get into your body and just create art that like feels really good to you share it if it hits it hits if it doesn't at least it still feels good to you um, I would probably tell myself, like, don't get caught up on social media numbers. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It doesn't matter how many likes you get, like the right people. If you're doing, if you're, I just think energetically, like if you're truly doing what you love to do and it feels good to you and you're like putting yourself out there as an artist, like people will see it in this day and age. There's just like no way that they won't. So just keep, post. I mean, just keep posting and keep, keep going at it. Um, I think I would also go back and tell myself about this website called Canva, where you can like make these um, photography menus and think I didn't find out about that till this year. So now I'm like, oh, I can make like a fancy PDF menu to like send to clients and stuff when they ask. Um, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Canva. If you don't know about Canva, Canva is the truth. There is there are so many things that you could do as a creative. Um, so, yes, use Canva. Um, Okay, so Sam, as far as, okay, so when you first started out, did you go to any other photographers to like mentor you or what, what was your process with that? Did you, were you self-taught? Like, how did you get into like building up your clientele in the beginning? And like, I know you mentioned like going on Craigslist and things like that, but <laughs> Do you have any advice for, you know, someone who's just starting out? They might not even have a camera yet. Um, you know, what are some some first steps that you could probably, you know, give them to just get their feet wet or get get started as a photographer? Yeah, um, I think when I first started, I was so insecure that I didn't have like the guts to ask a photographer like, hey, can I shadow you? I definitely would recommend um, just reaching out and asking if you like somebody's work, just reach out and ask. I feel like nine times out of 10, they're going to be willing to talk to you. Um, and if they're not, then like, you know, forget them. But um, yeah, I, I would say starting points, man. I'm like thinking back on when I first started and it's like, I did everything wrong. So um, yeah, I mean, I think that if you did some things wrong, you should, this is a good time to share that as well. Like what not to do. Like for me as a business owner, I wasted thousands of dollars investing it into my business and buying things that I didn't need to buy. So even as a photographer, like um, my first camera was from a pawn shop and then I bought like um, a Nikon. Um, and so I really didn't know like what type of camera to use. I really didn't know where to start out. So I was kind of just doing shit based off of like what I Google. <laughs> but um, I guess I guess every creative kind of starts out that way. There isn't really a, a roadmap or a blueprint on, you know, where to start. But do you have any camera suggestions? Some people say the Nikon is easier to use when you first start out. Some people say a Canon. Do you have a preference? And I, I think you use a Canon. Um, yeah, I'm a Canon girl. That's what I started on. And I probably will never will never change. Um, I love I love my camera. But I like you said earlier about um, getting your first camera at a pawn shop. I have bought used. I mean, I will buy used and probably until the day I die just because like, I, I just prefer it that way. I just I, so um, yeah, I, I always buy my equipment used if I can. And um, when you're buying a camera, if you're gonna buy it used, the main thing to look for is the shutter count. 
if the shutter count is over 100,000, that's a lot. So try to find a used camera with under or around, it's almost like a car, you know, try to find it with over or under 100,000 shutter clicks. Um, and the person that you buy it from, they'll have to like plug it into their computer to, to figure it out. But um, I, I mean, I started on a Canon Rebel and I shot with that for a while. And then I finally could afford a 60D, which I got on Craigslist for like 300 bucks maybe. And then finally, um, just this year, I got ended up getting a finally I got a full frame camera and I instantly saw my work just like get so much better. I was like, what have I been doing this whole time? But that being said, like I'm a firm believer that you can get a good photo with your iPhone. Like I don't think you have to have, you know, this like big ass telephoto thing to like get necessarily the shot that you want to get. I'm like a huge believer in any camera can take a cool photo. And especially now with all the fun editing that you can do, like, I mean, really just like, and that's the thing, like you said, is there's not really a manual on how to just start. Like I never took any photography classes. It's all, I'm all self-taught. Like I just started fiddling around and just like figured it out eventually. But I didn't, I mean, I, I was shooting on auto mode for a while. And then I finally learned how to shoot in manual and like control all the all the things. And that was a huge leap for my work. That took it from like college hobby to, okay, you're ready to like quit your job and like now you can actually shoot. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I can't remember. I think there was somewhere else I was gonna go, but I forgot. It's okay. You mentioned, you mentioned a couple things um, when it comes to the camera, but the the question I had a question about um you were saying that so when you first started off oh you were talking about the used camera so I have only bought my stuff new but see I'm not I guess I'm not well versed I would consider myself to be a photographer I just had to pick up the skill but um do you have any tips for photographers as far as um, a shooting style. So I know that you, when, when we first met, you like to shoot outdoors. Um, and most people might not know that you have like outdoor photography and then you have studio photography. Um, so do you have any tip? And you said that you could get a shot with your iPhone. It's really not about the camera that you have, but more so about, I guess, your knowledge base and things like that. So do you have any tips for like getting a good shot with whatever device you may have when it comes to, um, you know, getting a photo that you want? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think composition is always really important. I mean, you can always change that after and crop it and all that stuff, but I always like to get the composition good within the photo. So that way, you know, you have less to do later. Um, there's all kinds of DIY things you can do, like taking a flashlight can just make like a cool, you know, spotlight. If you take like a, like a toilet paper thing and that can make a fun thing for a photo shoot. Um, there's a couple of products that I've gotten from Amazon that I really like. Um, one is just like having a, a little tripod to put your phone on. If you need to take like a selfie or whatever, having a tripod's great. Um, and then there's also this little, uh, it was like a $15 spotlight. And you use it and it looks just like a like a stage spotlight, but it was so inexpensive. It was like a stage spotlight, like a small stage spotlight. So that has probably been like my favorite like purchase this year so far when it comes to just DIY. Because I'm, I'm such a DIY person. I didn't learn studio lighting. I didn't. I mean, I still don't really know studio lighting. I just kind of play around until I like what I see. Um, I got lucky and had a friend gift me a really nice like standing light. And as soon as I got that, then I started shooting more indoors. But before that, all I could really do was outdoors because I had no lighting. But I know that nowadays you can get lighting. I mean, you can get some for like pretty affordable. I mean, it's not going to be like, you know, the best, but um, again, like by used and you can always find a good deal. Um, but yeah, it's, and also like just fun little DIY things too. It's like, you can play with mirrors that you have laying around the house. You can take like a wine glass and shoot through it. And it makes it like cool, trippy sixties. Like I love playing with weird edits and just like kind of creating and doing all kinds of weird stuff. So, and it all comes from just like trying and seeing, um, I think that's part of the fun of photography. It's like, if you're curious about it, it's just play. And then, you know, when you're just playing and having fun, that's when you draw more opportunities to you. Um, so yeah, just use, 
use your stuff that you have in your house, like shoot through stuff and under and, you know, I'm always getting in like weird positions. I'm always like on the ground or standing on a chair to get, to get the photo. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say the same thing too. I know when I first started out, I used to, um, basically when I started out, I had this photographer who was doing like all my product photos and stuff. And I was like, you know, I just started asking questions because <laughs> I was like, you know, it's it's kind of expensive to have a photographer do all of my shoots and I was shooting every week. Um, and so I started asking him questions and then he would like come over um, and just help me out with like settings and different things like that. But I just think it's so important to be resourceful, like you said, and also just try new ideas, new shit, new um, ways to shoot. And I think you'll be all right as a photographer. So with that being said, Sam, I am so happy to have had you here on Boss Up Talk. I wanted to um, just close us out with um, just the top three things that you would tell a new creative that is starting a business are there any tips that you left out or any insight or do's or don'ts or um you know you talked about manifestation you talked about a lot of things but are there three things that you want to leave our audience with about how to boss up um your creativity in your life yes um to reiterate i think the main thing is like self-love self-care like work on your, your healing, your trauma, like the, the closer you get to being like an enlightened person as like, woo woo, as that might sound, the easier things just flow. And it's, um, like I would, uh, another, another thing that I would say is just like, don't get so caught up in the hustle culture. Um, because there's a lot about that, that we've just been like brainwashed to think is the way. And for some people that may work, some people are more, you know, in their masculine and more doers. And that's great. But if you're finding that you're hustling all the time and you don't have anything to show for it, like just try to lean into your feminine energy and start studying that and start, um, start looking at your thoughts as energy. Um, and then with, with photography specifically, just play around, have fun. That's the whole point of being an artist is to create and have fun and just like create from like your soul. <laughs> Yes, Sam. Yes. Great tips. Great tips. And I would follow up with that with. Um, I would say. I would say, like you said, um, focus on creating things that make you happy. Focus on creating work that you're proud of and everything else falls into place. Um, people start to gravitate towards you. Um, and it gets easier to get shit done <laughs> because the work stands for itself um, and you don't have to like pull teeth to get things done or to get opportunities. And like you said, with the hustle culture, it's not always great to be a hustler. You know, for me, I get burned out. I've broken into hives. I've been super stressed out. Um, and you mentioned the last thing, which was um, focusing on becoming more enlightened as a person and healing past traumas. I know I didn't touch on it as much as you did in this conversation, but I, I really wanted to follow up on that because that's something that um, is starting to come to the forefront in conversations, but not so much in the creative community as much as we need it. Um, and I think that it's important for you to get to know yourself, get to know some healing for yourself, and then your self-confidence will grow um and your work will get better and so and that's how you boss up your life so <laughs> that it, it really is and just one last yes. thing is like don't worry about what anybody else thinks like don't worry about what your mom thinks don't worry about what your dad thinks don't worry about what your boss at your you know if you have a day job don't worry like don't worry about your what your peers think what other artists like just focus on you because their opinions like do not serve you. And it's always nice when you get a compliment, like that's nice, but anything else you can just like block it out. <laughs> yes, totally. Do not play into what other people think. And I know I, I, I'm, I've been very guilty of that for 
a long time, but I'm 30 now, so my fluctivity levels <laughs> they're all they're almost depleted. So um yes, that's great advice. So this concludes our boss up talk for this week. And I thank you so much, Sammy. Y'all will see more of Sammy in our community. She's a great creative. Um, if you're local to Nashville and you are interested in getting some work um as far as photography, definitely reach out to her. Sam, what's your uh Instagram? It's at Sammy Hearn, and it should be there on my name right there, but it's S-A-M-M-Y-H-E-A-R-N. And uh, yeah, that's me. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was great. And got something out of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gave great advice. I'm so excited. Thank you again. And um, this episode will be on other platforms pretty soon. So see you guys later. Signing out.